news article that just came out, Wall Street Journal, Realtor.com is listing the hottest real estate markets. Uh, they, they seem to want to make sure that they've truncated this information. In other words, it used to be they would do like a quarter or half a year in arrears. Now they're doing a month in arrears. So the hottest markets during the month of August um, 2021. Let's uh, see if anybody can list the top market. Just take a guess, wild guess. You can even get it to the state because I don't think anybody's going to get this. This is one that came out of left field out of the sun and I didn't see it, uh, but it is right now the currently the hottest real estate market in the U.S. and it's for an unusual reason, um, but one that we've talked about for over a year. It's that folks have learned to work from home, work remotely, and in addition to that, they want to live remote. And uh, in particular, the the person or the couple in the article that they've talked about, the Wall Street Journal article, was a folk with a couple that lived in Portland, Oregon, and were able to both get their jobs from a remote basis, and they moved to another state and another town. Um, so let's see what everybody is guessing here. Go ahead and put your put your guesses in the chat. Podunk, Kentucky, that's a, that's a good one, I like that one. Um, we have Nebraska, Texas, Texas, Podunk, Kentucky, uh, Austin, uh, North Dakota. Uh, any other guesses? All right, let's close this. Um, the uh, drum roll, please. The, the number one market in the month of August 2021 was Billings, Montana. I'm going to go through the top 10 on Thursday night's call. And everybody can, uh, you know, chime in and we'll see if we can guess the, the next ones. But they are all, surprisingly, they are all relatively small towns. There's no big towns on the list. And they're all very remote. And so as the time goes on, and we're getting into this post-COVID era, or maybe it's the resurgence of the small uh, C COVID era, people are moving further and further away. So it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting thing coming up. Um, I want to, and I'm going to see if I can do this from a technological standpoint. Um, I want to talk about uh, the things that you can do to your home if you're rehabbing that will not help. Um, Ashley, can you hear me okay if I, I do this? Yeah, you're yeah okay. we can. Okay. Okay. Uh, you may have to text me in case it doesn't work. I'm going to give this a try. Okay, the number one thing that you can do to your home that's going to mess you up is, uh, and, and these are things that you would not uh, want to do. These are things that are not going to bring you your money back. So um, these things go from a high of for every dollar you spend, you lose 95 cents on down to every dollar you spend, you lose about 50 cents. So there's a, there's a huge chunk of things that you don't want to do to your house prior to selling it and that you will not get your money back for. The worst thing, lavish lighting fixtures. You don't want to do that. Um, number two, the worst thing you can do is add too much wallpaper to your house. Uh, number three, texture on the walls and ceilings of your house. If you add extra texture, um, it's not going to get you your money back, not even close. You're going to lose about 80 cents on the dollar. Um, the next thing is quirky tile. And we've talked about this before. Uh, you see people that want to build a house or remodel their house to meet their specific interest levels and, and that type of thing. And the example that they used in this article was a checkerboard floor, tile floor, black and white, made it look like a 1950s diner. These guys lost more money on the value of that house than they put into it. I mean, literally, they spent $10,000 on the tiling and they had their value reduced by about 20 Next item is too much carpeting. You know, the deal today, of course, is hardwood or mostly faux hardwood. It's the hardwood that looks like real hardwood, but is actually a, a laminate material. Uh, too much carpeting, however, will drop your value. Bright and bold paint covers. Everybody wants, you know, an accent wall. That was a big thing two years ago, or a couple of accent walls, or one room with certain colors. That will drop your value dramatically. Um, an extremely high-end kitchen is a no-no to do. Sorry, got dog barking here. A uh, luxury bathroom, uh, a bathroom that, um, you know, is overdone for 
uh, the standard, especially in the area. You won't get your value for that. Uh, a home office conversion, surprisingly, although that is one of the least worst things you can do, if that makes any sense. Uh, you're going to get, you know, most but not all of the money back that you have converted over to an office. And the main reason is because primarily you're converting bedrooms to offices. And so that's, uh, that's no good. You're, you're much better off with a bedroom. Um, combining bedrooms to create a bigger room. You see these things all the time. We, we look at houses that uh, property shows, according to the assessor's office, that it's a four bedroom, two bath. You go in and look at it and it's a three bedroom, two bath. And they think they've added, uh, you know, a lot of value by combining two bedrooms to make a big master. That'll actually hurt you. Uh, you will not get your money back, not even close. Uh, and last but not least is the removal of closets. Uh, people will do that to make a bedroom bigger and they'll put uh, some kind of a credenza or, or something, you know, in terms of uh, cabinetry up against the wall. Um, you will lose credit for that room as a bedroom on the appraisal. You will no longer be able to qualify as a bedroom. Uh, it becomes an extra over room or an office. And so you will lose value from that standpoint. Plus, people like built-in closets over stand-up closets. That is the top list. Uh, any questions anybody has on that before we get going? If not, let's fire up. Who do we have for calls today, Ash? I don't see any hands up. All right, guys, it's time to get your hands in the air. Yeah, no hands, nothing in chat yet. We need to see who's got what going. What's everybody seeing out there in the marketplace? I'd like to talk about it. So if you guys can uh, go ahead and raise your hand, we'll unmute you. Ashley, Brandy, Kevin, what do we got going uh, in our business? What are you guys seeing out there? I am seeing a lot of older people who are... Uh, wanting to downsize they're they're oh, they're overwhelmed in their houses or they're upside down in their houses mm -hmm. um i just talked to the second gentleman uh that i've spoken with in the last i would say like three or four days that had to give back their reverse mortgage because they had to move and that really put them in the hole so uh lots of people out there who need to sell their properties they can't take care of them anymore um a lot of people dealing with the aftermath of being sick and needing to get out of their houses because they can't take care of them anymore. Um, seeing a lot of people from Louisiana who are now feeling the need to move because of the, the recent inclement weather. Yep. So lots of people are ready to sell. Um, of course, you know, some of the newer ones still thinking they can get top dollar for their property that may be damaged mm -hmm. or outdated. Um, but they are prime, prime candidates for people who would benefit from doing, um, doing for selling their home on terms because they they also don't have the money to fix them up to get top dollar. Right. There, there are a lot of houses that have equity. A ton of houses that have equity, even with a decreasing market price across the nation. Uh, a lot of these houses will still end up at the bottom with some equity. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that is something to keep in mind. Uh, it may look like there's a ton of equity today. Maybe by the time you pick it up and you do a subtail or something like that to it, it may not make as much sense, but it probably still makes pretty good sense. Uh, even if the price is dropped because of the levels of equity that you've got out there. Now, Brandy mentioned, and somebody just asked a question about reverse mortgages. You cannot buy a reverse mortgage subject to. Um, you'd have to have uh, the, the ability to go out there and cash that property out if you wanted to do something like that. Um, so uh, unfortunately, that's just the way, that's the nature because of how a reverse mortgage works. They can continue to essentially borrow against the property. Uh, and they will tend to call those things due if, uh, if you do do those. So stay away from reverse mortgages unless it's a great deal to buy from a cash standpoint. And there are a number of those that are available out there. You can put those on a contract. But ultimately, remember, your only interest strategy is a cash. 
one. So you can put it on a contract and sell it wholesale. Uh, you can put it on a contract and cash it out yourself and rehab it and sell it, that type of thing. But uh, it won't work uh, to do it with a on a subject to type transaction.